where you are now shall not be your limit. You will go beyond. You will possess possessions. You will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, let me hear a better amen. Father, thank you today. It's time to hear you speak to our hearts. We are open to you. We want to hear from you. We want to be blessed by you. Have your way in this place and cause your name to be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Use me, your servant, and let the shafts of your blessing flow. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. In Joshua chapter 1, I'll read from verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Praise God. This morning I'm speaking on the topic, Entering a New Face. In life, entering a new face in life. Let me begin to say that life is not meant to be static by God. No, He never intended it that way. I have discovered that getting into new life experiences is what makes life interesting. If you are static, life cannot be interesting. But please understand that until you know how to make God's giving opportunity to you count, then the purpose or what it means to enter a new phase in life cannot be achieved. From Joshua this morning, we'll be learning a number of things of what it means to enter a new phase in one's life. All that Joshua knew before now was to answer to Moses run errands as directed by Moses. He took pleasure in that. He found joy in that. He found fulfillment in that. Serving Moses. When Moses was fasting, he will fast. When Moses was on the mount, he will be at the foot of the mount. Every time Moses was doing something new, Joshua was always around. It came to a time God said to Moses, bring Joshua out in the congregation, lay hands on him publicly so that I will take off your spirit and put in him. Even at that time, Joshua still did not understand. He thought he had become so useful to Moses, Moses wanted to equip him to become more useful. He didn't know that God was preparing him for something greater. I pray for you this morning that which God has spent years preparing you for, you shall enter in the name of Jesus Christ. So Moses eventually died and God came to Joshua. The days of mourning were to be 30 days but 30 days of mourning were passed 
and the camp was lowly. No direction. God came to Joshua and God said to him, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now rise up. Now rise up. For Joshua to rise at such a time, it was going to be a new challenge. The challenge and the burden of serving Moses was something enormous. Now to take him from that to become the leader of the camp, become the leader of the children of Israel was something else entirely. Did he prepare for it? I have discovered everyone God ever used was never adequately prepared. We all learn on the job. When God met Moses and said, I'm sending you to Egypt to meet for Pharaoh, Moses said, who am I? He said, God, I'm not prepared. Why was Joshua hiding himself, not speaking out as a servant of Moses, telling the people, I know if Moses were here, it would have been this, it would have been that, it would have been that. No, he didn't do that because he didn't see himself qualified for that until God began to speak. I pray this morning you will hear God. God said, Joshua, arise. You are going to lead these people to conquer Canaan. Not only conquer it, you will divide the land of the tribes and help them to settle down in their allotments. And Joshua was wondering, me? Or is God talking to someone else? I'm known to be a servant to Moses. Are there not better people here? There may be better people. But Joshua was the one God wanted at that material time. I want to announce to every one of us, life is not meant to be static. New experiences are bound to come. And as you are led by God into these new faces, please, ability to take charge, ability to do according to the will of God, to possess your possession, will count to what success you make in life. I plead with you, desire and be determined to succeed in life. The place you are now is not your limit. There is something greater. There is something better. And you shall go greater. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Joshua and his new face. Joshua chapter 1. Look at verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto thee as I said unto Moses. Verse 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river, the river Euphrates all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coasts. Verse 5. There shall no man there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Every new face is interesting when God is with you. Every new face can be a fulfillment in your life when God is with you. God began to speak to Joshua. He said, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given you from this wilderness to the great river Euphrates, to the Indian Ocean, everything I have given you, count it from Lebanon. You are the owner. 
But till this day, some people are still occupying part of the land of Israel. Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and a host of others, even Iraq. They are all occupying the land that Israel should have occupied. Why were they not able to occupy everything? That's what we are looking at this morning. Rise up, let me speak into your life. You will not leave to another what you should conquer. You will not leave to another what you should possess. The testimony that should come from your mouth will not come from another. In the name of Jesus Christ. The place God says you will get to, you will get there. The things God says you will do, you will do. Every hindrance will give way. In the name of Jesus Christ. And God said to Joshua, every place the sole of your foot shall tread on, I have given you. It is I will give you, I have given you. This business is settled. Your new face is a settled business. But you know the problem of man, the fear of the unknown. Every new thing comes with challenge and so much fear. But I want to let you know, if God is the one leading, if God is the one directing, if this, if this is God's new face for you, all it takes to acquire, all it takes to succeed is there for you. Every place that sole of your foot shall tread upon, God said, I have given you. And then he went further to say, there shall not any man be able to stand before you. You already told him, you are more than conqueror. You are a possessor of all things. Everywhere you enter, you must come out with victory and testimony. I want to announce to you this morning, you are taking the place of Joshua. But God didn't stop there. With the promises. He went further to give him or show him his responsibility. Many of us are not responsible. Neither do we take responsibility. We are leaving everything to God. He said, every place I tread on is mine. He says, every, no man will be able to stand before me. Everything is true. It's when your own part is fulfilled. These other ones will bow. Look at verse 6. Be strong. And of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. God said to Joshua, What did he say to him? Be strong and courageous. Can you help me look at somebody to your right or to your left? And help me announce to the person, be strong and courageous. Every promise God gave to Joshua will fail. If Joshua will not be strong and courageous, if Joshua will see the Philistines and melt in his heart, if Joshua will see the mountains of Canaan and faint in his heart, if Joshua will see challenges and faint in his heart, the promises will no longer be potent enough to sustain him. But when he will bear responsibility, God said, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Somebody says, well, God wanted him to be militarily minded. There are many people who are militarily minded and they are achieving nothing. We have been fighting Boko Haram for how many years now? We have not conquered Boko Haram. With Boko Haram came headsmen. With headsmen came kidnappers. And the things on the increase on daily basis, the challenges are enormous. And then we have the bandits. There are people who are militarily strong, but we are where we are. It's more than being physically strong. And 
I pray God all of us shall be strong and we shall be courageous in the name of Jesus Christ what does it mean to be strong that we might be able to accomplish divine purposes in our lives one be strong in knowledge in the knowledge of him be strong in that the more of God you know the better be strong in the knowledge of him times will come that that knowledge will be challenged be strong in the knowledge of him number two be strong in conviction be strong in conviction Joshua needed to convince himself if God has spoken if I will obey everything will work out do not be double minded the Bible says a double minded man is unstable and let not that man expect anything to come from God conviction be strong in conviction number three be strong in faith resolute faith resolute faith be strong in faith some years ago in the days of strong persecution and Christians were being slaughtered and killed anyhow because of their faith this man was carried away and they told him to recount to deny Christ and he said no why should I deny him I've served him for over 40 years and he has not failed me one day I cannot fail him now do whatever you like and he's sealed with his testimony with his blood resolute faith are you sure everything God has told you they are real, they are true? Are you sure that God is able to bring to pass every promise he has given to you? Are you settled that every promise he made he is able to fulfill? I'd like you to please get to the point that resolute faith, no going back, I've reached a point of no return with God. Be strong in your faith. Number four, be strong in persuasion. Persuasion. With persuasion comes passion. Passion. If you are not passionate about what you are doing, you will not stay long there. A young man after graduation from Bible school was sent on missions to India. And at that time, India was very dark a nation. Almost anything was God. And he labored and labored. Others that were sent to other places were having fantastic breakthrough. He had no breakthrough. And his friends will write him letters asking him how the work was going and how they were doing. He will reply them back by saying the work is as bright as the promises of God. No soul. But he kept on repeating it. It's as bright as the promises of God. He held on to that. And one day, a spark took place. Explosion began to happen. I want to say to you, it's not over until you say, it is over. 
Be strong in persuasion. And number five, be strong in, in positive confession. Positive confession. Keep on saying it, brother. Keep on saying it, sister. Be strong in your positive confession. Abraham and Sarah, they were barren for years. But God gave them names. He said, your name is no more Abraham, but Abraham. Abraham means father of few. Abraham means father of multitudes. Father of many nations. Sarah, the same thing. Sarah, mother of you. Sarah, mother of multitude. Mother of nations. So every time people called him Abraham, father of many nations, father of multitude, and there was no child. If you were, maybe you would have told them, stop calling me this name. Because I have no evidence to show positive confession. Father of many nations, mm? mother of many nations, eh? every time, eh? Mm? Eh? Mm? and there was no child. And the Bible says, Abraham against hope believed in hope. Positive confession. And at the end of the day, after 24 years of waiting, God gave him the joy of his heart. Let me tell you, year one, God will have given him triplets, quadruplets, but God did not do it. God was proving his faith. God was proving his patience. God was proving his ability to stand with God and wait to see the promises of God fulfilled. How strong are you, Abraham? How strong are you? How strong are you, brother? How strong are you, sister? God said to Joshua, be strong. And courageous. If only you are strong in your heart, you are courageous in your spirit, you will conquer the land and you will divide it to the people. If you look at the size of the land, if you look at the manner of people in the land, you will faint. But if you will hold on to me and be strong in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind, everything will work out wonderfully well. And to the glory of God, it came to pass. Our own will come to pass. What do we have to be strong? What can we lay hold on? What can we build on? For Joshua to be strong, he will remind himself, every place the sole of my foot had come upon is mine. So anytime he enters, as long as, he, the moment he steps there, he will announce, Joshua has conquered this place. And the place will be conquered. Are you not surprised that there was no shooting, no kicking in Jericho? They only have to march around because every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given unto you. And then they shouted hallelujah and the walls came down. The promises of God can be so strong. What do we have? We have promises of God. Unfailing word of truth to build on. And I checked up and I saw in Hebrews chapter 4 in verse 12. The Bible says the word of God, the promises of God, they are like two sharp edged swords. It will cut any direction. Praise God. What do we have? We have the word of truth unfailing word of God potent word of God that was what helped Joshua it's not by might it's not by power but by my spirit says the Lord Abraham against hope believed in hope and God's word got fulfilled in his life look at Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29 Jeremiah 23 verse 29 
Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Praise God. May you not be where fire is burning. Fire will lick up anything. Say it's like hammer that will break the rock in pieces. That's the word of God. And I want to encourage you this morning. Every new face will carry challenges. But as you stand upon the word of God, you will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 10, say, finally, my brethren, what did he say? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord in the power of his mind. If you ask me this morning, how will I prevail? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Pastor, the challenges around me, they are enormous. I'm almost drowning. It's a lie. I will shout it to you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. I cannot understand. I didn't know that marriage is like this. I feel like pulling out. I will announce to you, you don't need to pull out. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Examination is coming. I do not know how to go about it. I'm even more confused now than ever. I will repeat to you, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Have I not told you? This brother was confused like you are confused right now. And he went to God in prayer. He said, God, I am your child. I am your servant. Everybody in our class, they know that I'm a child of God. If I fail, they will laugh at me. They are going to say, it's because I go to church always. I do that always. I do that always. That's the reason why I failed. God, you must help me. And he was reading for ICANN. And that following day was going to be statistics. And he said he didn't know anything statistics. He read and read and read the more he read the more he was got confused. So after praying that night, he saw himself in the examination hall. And the question paper was given to him and the answer was put by the side. And he looked and looked and memorized and memorized and read and read and read and read. And read. And he, got, he woke up. Ah, he said, this could be God. I prayed before I slept. God must have given me a revelation. So he prayed and he said, God, help me out. I am convinced that something is going to happen today. A miracle is waiting for me. And he got to the examination hall. And they brought the question paper. By the time he opened it, number one to five, just the same way he saw it. He didn't need to wonder where to go. They also showed him the answer there. So he just put the answers, one, this, number two, number three, number four. And then he gave out the papers. And he left. So the others looked at him and they smiled. They said, we well, know that this is, is not his subject. He has failed this one. But by the time result came, it was A. And others came and said, come. So you were deceiving us. Come, come and teach us. How did you do this? He said, please just leave me alone. Just, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. He had nothing to answer because it's a miracle. Right? So let me speak into your life. A miracle will speak for you. A miracle will answer to you. A turnaround will come to you. All you need is be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Joshua was told, be strong and courageous. He conquered Canaan. Now God is saying to us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want to say to you, that new face, you will conquer it. You will make good success of it. 
And every new phase that we come from now, you are in some success in the name of Jesus Christ. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let us pray. Commit yourself to him and ask him to help you. You want to make good success in life. Failure is not your portion. You may have prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing has happened. Do not change your mind. Do not change your direction. If that is the leading of God, only is waiting for you. Only will come out from the rock. Anything is possible. Oh yes. People will soon have to sing your praise. And give your testimony. Because God is there for you. Everything will work out accordingly. That your joy may be full in him. Thank you father. In Jesus name we pray. Lord, we confess that on our own we can do nothing. But as you give us opportunity, we will faint no more in the name of Jesus Christ. We we'll do our best to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Like Paul of old who cried out, he said, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Lord, I pray that this day you reveal yourself to your children like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. Answer every prayer. Solve every problem. Open up the questions and give solution in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring testimonies around in every life. And let the new face become a reason for new testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. That which is a challenge right now, my father, bring a turn around, a miracle, a testimony, a reason for your praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.